The problem is, with cults, they don't give you that free choice. Now, of course, with Christianity, how do you, well, really separate the cults from the non-cults? Aren't they all cults? Maybe one of them's right, maybe none of them are right. That's debatable. Maybe if there's a forgiving God, maybe that God will forgive you your mistakes, your errors, because you're following what you're told. You're following what you think is true, and therefore can you truly be held to be accountable? But then again, there's a difference between, well, average, everyday, mundane practices and beliefs that you could call cults and dangerous or potentially dangerous and destructive organisations. That's where we typically use the term cult. When we have a, well, an organisation which is actually abusing its followers, extorting them, abusing them perhaps physically, mentally, sexually perhaps, that happens. And so there is a difference between the average kind of religious practice and the obviously extreme practices and even the incredibly extreme where you end up with abuses. That has to be noted. And when you see people being guided by a, well, a massively controlling belief, a massively manipulating belief, and you end up with a charismatic leader ruling the roost, controlling the hive, I mean, what is that? I mean, that is what we would call, in, you know, typical, classic terms, a cult. So, in other words, even though some people would say, and some of my, I'm an atheist, but some of my fellow atheists would say, um, that all religions are cults. Well, if that's true, and that's, you know, debatable according to the definition, then you can say, well, there's a massive difference between that kind of definition of a cult and the kind of true cult, or I should say dangerous or potentially dangerous cult, which is liable to cause harm to society, to themselves, and liable to have a domineering leader or series of leaders. So there's a massive difference between what we would call religion and what we would call a cult.